Hi, I'm Andre De La Ressa. I'm a lieutenant with the Austin Fire Department. My name is Adam Myatt. Name is Todd Bircher. My name is Michael Kremering. I'm a detective with the Austin Police Department. Dan Shepard, uh, Firefighter 2, EMT Paramedic, Corpus Christi Fire Department. I'm a lieutenant with the Austin Fire Department. I'm an engineer or driver. I'm an investigator with the Child Abuse Unit. I'm a senior police officer with the Austin Police Department. I'm on the motorcycle unit. Tracy Garish. I am a sergeant with the Austin Police Department. I've been here for 26 years. I've been with uh, Georgetown for 18 years. I've been a firefighter for coming up on 23 years. I've been a police officer for over 28 years. I've been with the city of Austin for over 14 years. Um, so it's been a long time that I've done this cop thing. Man, by the right. By the right. Hello. It's simply a marching command that we often use to call off our tunes and sets, how our pipe major calls us to order, to give us the beat and tone and direction for our tunes. But to me, it also represents more. It represents the right, those things that we do, not because they're easy, but because they're hard and right and need to be done. And that, more than anything, is what this story today is about. Something that isn't easy, that isn't simple nor straightforward, but carries within it the depth and breadth of the human experience. Espada is a band made up of public servants, of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics. Public service brings us in contact with people often during the worst times of their lives, when they are hurt, weak, vulnerable, or afraid. But it gives us a chance to help them pick themselves up, to bring them out of harm's way, and to protect them from whatever they cower from in the darkness of their own lives. Emergency services, especially in the northeastern United States, have a long history with bagpipes. In the late 1800s, public service jobs were undesirable to many because of low pay and poor benefits. Irish immigrants joined the police and fire services, bringing with them the tradition of bagpipes for parades, ceremonies, and funerals. The first police emerald society was formed in New York City in the 1950s, but the tradition in central Texas is a bit newer. So, hello, my name is Will Persley. I'm a police detective with the Austin Police Department. I've been a police officer since 1998. I was a bagpiper for several years and later became a snare drummer, first with the Austin PD Pipe and Drum Corps in 2003 and then with Espada as well. Members of Espada, the Emergency Service Pipes and Drums Association, are primarily active duty police, fire, and EMS workers who practice and perform as an extra duty in addition to their normal job assignments within their agencies. Espada is a 501c3 nonprofit organization whose mission is to provide support for emergency response employees and volunteers and the communities they serve. Espada's primary function is to perform at funerals for fallen police, fire, EMS, and other first responders, especially those killed in the line of duty. Here's Pipe Major Todd Bircher and a few other founding members of Espada to speak a bit more about how the band came to be. So yeah, I started playing in 1998 is when I got my first set of pipes. Um, that was under Chief Stan Nee. Um, he, I had been in the Austin Police Department Honor Guard for a couple years prior to that. Our commander at that time was um, Jim O'Leary, who uh, was an Irishman, and w I went to him um, after I went to an um, officer's funeral where a civilian was playing the funeral. Um, I felt like that's a job or something that we need to be doing, that I need to be doing. Um, instead of getting a civilian to come out to play our own funerals. So after the department um, bought my set of pipes, after a, a short while I played my first funeral, and I believe that was in 98, 1998. Um, after that, uh, I had several officers come up to me, approach me, and ask if they could learn how to play pipes as well. Um, so uh, we started our first group, I think had about 12 people in it. Of that 12 people, four or five stuck with it, which is pretty much the standard. Um, and um, we started up the Austin Police Department Pipe and Drum Corps. Um, and I believe that the first time we played um, was maybe 2004, somewhere in there. Um, and we've been building ever since. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of, um, of the band. We started with Coit Kessler when he was recruiting Pipers when it was the Austin Fire Department Pipe and Drum Corps. And then when we split from the Austin Fire Department, we became the Emergency Service Pipes and Drums Association. We started working on getting the band together back in 2000, 2008. We were with uh, the Austin Fire Department Pipe and Drum Corps before that. 
and we worked hand in hand a lot with the Austin Police Department's Pipe and Drum Corps. We started down the road of creating the nonprofit Emergency Service Pipes and Drums Association and got the, fi the paperwork all filed and then we started practicing together and bringing in EMS was with us there at the Austin Travis County EMS in the beginning and rapidly we started growing and including Georgetown and uh, Pflugerville, Round Rock came on, now we have the people down from Corpus Christi coming, Fort Worth Police, we've got uh, expanded to the entire Central Texas area. Espana performs at events all over the state. Locally they perform at events ranging from September 11th and Veterans Day to community events such as the Chewy's Children Giving a Children Parade and the Red Poppy Parade as well as Service Academy graduations and emergency service memorials. Nationally, the band has performed in events ranging from Colorado and Washington State to Washington, D.C. at National Police Week, where Espada has earned consecutive national championships at the Memorial Pipe Band competition. There's many different types of events that I really enjoy. Uh, the musicality of our band. Our band is we're national champs for the public safety side of it because we have a very good sound. Our pipe majors have stressed that there. Uh, immensely so we've been able to play events that are just musically they give you chills when you're going down there on 9-11 when we play our our memorial event under the rotunda of the Capitol and the pipes are just humming and the drums are snapping it's just something that's awe-inspiring when you were going out to competition and we went out to Estes Park to compete in the Highland Games there and you're s s walking out in the middle of these mountains on this beautiful green lawn and you're going out and there's the stands of crowds watching you. It gives you that adrenaline rush like anything. The Capitol on 9-11, uh, playing in the rotunda, the, the capital of the state of Texas is, is pretty cool. Pretty fortunate to be able to be in that place. Um, yeah, there's just so many fun things we get to do. There, There is you know, a fair amount of practice behind the scenes to, to memorize the amount of music that a spot is working on nowadays. So that's that's good. It keeps you keeps you going, and you don't just become stagnant and get bored. So. As far as the Washington D.C. competition, um, that's an annual competition um, at the National Police Memorial, where thousands of officers go every year in May, um, and. Um, the best bands compete against one another um, for honors of winning, but more importantly, uh, the winning band then marches in the surviving family members into the actual memorial itself um, in front of, um, again, thousands of officers. Uh, usually the President of the United States is there as well as Vice President, uh, Attorney General and whatnot. So it's a big honor and, and I really enjoy doing that. The band puts in so much time and energy into not only learning the tunes, but perfecting the tunes. Our band's philosophy is um, to play as beautifully as you can play. These instruments, when played correctly, are beautiful instruments. We learn tunes that are primary to our number one mission, which is uh, to play at the funerals of the fallen. Of officers and firefighters and EMTs who were killed in the line of duty. We play those sets at their funerals. And those tunes are beautiful tunes. Um, although f funerals are obviously a very sad event, um, we play somewhat majestic tunes. Um, our goal um, is to help bring purpose to an otherwise purposeless death, uh, following the uh, death of an officer. What I like most about the band is the camaraderie. Um, uh, these are some of the best people I've ever met and it's given us an opportunity to uh, really build relationships and bonds with other agencies such as fire department, emergency services, as well as other police officers from different cities. Uh, I like the fact that we can all come together and party but also come together to do something very important. And then on top of that, 
you're in a group full of cops and firefighters and EMS, so you can be yourself <laughs> and say whatever you need to say, and you're amongst family. And especially with what we do in terms of honoring those that have fallen in the line of duty, um, I get to be a part of a family, a part of a, a group that renders honors to another family that's made a sacrifice that we, we can't even imagine. Just like the fire service where you work with your brothers and sisters, that's absolutely what the band is. When you've got these, these guys and gals that you spend so much time with, so much time practicing, you go through a lot. Um, we have a lot of fun together and we mourn together. There's been losses in our, um, in our respective agencies and uh, to be able to lean on our brothers and sisters is, is uh, invaluable. In the emergency services professions, we work a lot with people in uh, emotionally intense situations. So you get that say, a sense of camaraderie that is an, almost unique to our profession. We get that in the band as well. It's a sense of family, of people who are interested in going beyond and doing, uh, doing it, something that's not easy. Uh, the thing I love most about the band is honestly the camaraderie of playing with everybody, the, the going out and honoring, honoring the fallen heroes, the families, uh, providing a bittersweet service to uh, the families of the fallen who uh, need something at the worst time of their life. And it's just, to me, that's the most awesome part of it. The band is a group of folks that you just don't experience that. That's really true brotherhood. Uh, we get along really, really well, and if, if something were to happen, you know those folks are going to rally around you, and they're going to be there in your, in, in your hardest days. Coming for one common cause, to play the pipes and drums, but also the brotherhood and sisterhood that we have together. Um, we don't get a whole lot of that with smaller bands. Um, having a larger band like a Spada allows us to embrace more and more tunes and uh, actually be around a lot more people that are loving the same thing that we love. What's true with APD, as I'm sure is true with lots of agencies, is people move around into uh, different jobs and, um, and don't see each other a lot. Um, somebody you knew at the beginning of your career, you may not have seen for 15, 20 years by the end of your career. Um, with the band, there's that continuity, is I know that I'm gonna be in the same team throughout my career. I'm gonna see the same good friends um, throughout my career. Um, and I, I love the band. Um, the band are my best friends are, are in the band. My own story isn't unlike that of many others in the band. In my first two years as a police officer, I went to eight line of duty funerals. I knew two of the officers killed. When the opportunity was presented to learn the bagpipes and become part of a group of officers giving back to the department, I began studying under Pipe Major Todd Bircher. As I began performing at events, I quickly came to realize that the service we provided was especially valued by the survivors, both families and co-workers of those fallen, even well after the scroll of the pipes and the snap of the drums had faded into silence. My years in the band as both performing bagpiper and snare drummer have been some of the most difficult, yet rewarding time spent as a police officer. I am routinely reminded that it is one of the best, most important things I've done in my career to give back to the emergency services and my community as a whole. The bagpipes and the drums are not easy, especially in a large band like we have. There's a lot of commitment that goes into it, and everyone is committed to it. We are working together, we're practicing, we wake up ridiculously early to go play some events for sunrise services or, or events or go late, or we're road tripping out to El Paso to, to play a line of duty event. And it's an honorable thing with a group of people who are really into it who see the value of it and being able to do something that I feel is good and important with a big group of people who are the same thing and being able to help the family and the coworkers when we are needed and the communities when we're just playing a parade. It's seeing the smile on a, on a kid's face as we go by, seeing uh, the look of thanks and families when we're playing a funeral or seeing the sense of honor when we're playing a ceremony or graduation. It's, 
it's something that you don't see. It's a, it's a positive emotion where we're getting to do something outside of our normal line, but still in line of our normal work. Um, this shirt is the shirt that I ended up getting when I was in New York City. I was given an, an opportunity being part of the band and part of the honor guard for the police department to go out and represent for Officer Lou after he was killed in the line of duty. Myself and another officer were there with approximately 30,000 other police officers from across the nation. I remember multiple times playing for funerals and the way that the music, especially the bagpipe music, touches those around that listen to it. It's a, it's a, very, it's a very specific feeling knowing that we're able to give that talent back to those that need it the most. Before I had come to, to the city of Austin, I had been a law enforcement officer down in the San Antonio area for 14 plus years. Um, and unfortunately, in the 28 years that I've been a police officer, um, I've watched friends and colleagues uh, pay the ultimate sacrifice and, and have been, um, um, have died in the line of duty. So one of the things that had always impressed me was the honors that was given to them. Um, and I saw how that affected families. I saw how families uh, responded to that amount of grandeur being bestowed upon somebody who's given that ultimate sacrifice. I had always been intrigued by the bagpipes. I had heard them for many years. Uh, had the opportunity when I was actually in the academy to meet and, he, um, and get to know really well our pipe major, Todd Berger, uh, who was the founder of everything that we've done. Um, and there was an opportunity to learn the bagpipes through the department that Todd would teach us. And I thought, what greater honor could I ever be able to do but to honor fallen officers by um, being able to play bagpipes in, in their memory and, and give them the um, honor and prestige that they deserve. A line of duty funeral is special because that's the, you're getting to honor that officer or firefighter or paramedic for their ultra, ultimate sacrifice. And when they've put themselves in that position and, and they put on that badge every day, they know the risks that they, that they take, um, but they do it anyway. And then when they lose their life, you have that opportunity to pay them that that respect. Whereas before I was in the band, I would go to a funeral, I would see all of the ceremonial things that were done during the funeral, but I wasn't a part of them. And then after I joined the band, actually getting to be a part of that ceremony and being there in that capacity for the family, you just can't even describe it. That's the best honor that I can think of that I'm capable of doing. My first line of duty death funeral was out in West Texas. We had to travel quite a ways to get there. Um, there was a lot of nervousness and pressure before we actually played. But then as soon as we started playing, and as soon as I, I, I struck in the bagpipes and I heard that sound and I started feeling the emotion behind what we practiced and practiced and practiced, then the feeling of the music took over. And it's very touching. I almost started crying. I remember being really nervous the first time we had to play a line of duty death funeral. It was different. We'd pl I'd played funerals before. I'd played funerals for friends in the beginning just trying to play an Amazing Grace and it was emotional but when we, f we finally walked out and we were leading in the casket of, of a co-worker, someone who could have been just like any of us, it hits and um, what I found interesting, it's just like being on any emergency scene that you don't think about what's going on, the emotional side of it. You're thinking of what you do to fix the problem or you're going through your process. And sometimes there's nothing you can do and you're just trying to minimize it. And here we had a job. We had our objectives we had to meet. We had to play in, and we had to do it with respect and we had to. And the margin of error is still the same. And on the field, on the, an emergency scene, the margin of error is you or your coworkers or people who trust you possibly losing their life, being and getting hurt, of trying to save a civilian. Um, 
in that line of duty funeral, the margin of error is if you mess up, there's people who've already been through too much. They've, they are hurting and they need you. So there is, you're playing and you've got to play it well. And I was comforted to know that I was playing with a band that we've practiced. We worked hard for this and that was comfortable. Um, that was reassuring. And afterwards, after we stopped playing, then you, you start to think about and you let your feelings start to creep past that barrier that you set up so that you can do the job. And uh, then it hits you what's, what's actually happened and, and you're proud of being able to help and being able to help well and be around in the middle of a band that could, could step forth and perform at the level that we do. Uh, my first line of duty death was a uh, Travis County deputy. Uh, I played solo at that funeral. Um, it was overwhelming. Um, I hadn't yet learned how to um, how to separate myself from that grief. So that was a difficult funeral to play, as we all deal with at every funeral. Let's be absolutely clear on something. In polite conversations in this video, you hear a lot about individuals who have made the ultimate sacrifice and those fallen or lost in the line of duty. I know we all know what that means, but to be direct, we're talking about death. Grizzled, grotesque, and final. At its best, it's a traffic collision or a heart attack. At its worst, it's a structure collapsing in flames and debris, or shots breaking the night silence, rending flesh and bone. Like many in Espada, one of the most memorable events for me was the funeral of Officer Jaime Padron in 2012. Having personally worked the crime scene, I also take pride in my performance after the fact, serving as peer support for others who worked the case, as well as guarding the pall at the funeral home, along with other members of Honor Guard and the Pipe and Drum Corps. And I remember playing the funerals, events both in Austin and in San Angelo. I performed the bagpipe solo walk-off in San Angelo, Officer Padron's final resting place, which also ended up being my final performance as a bagpiper, before returning to the band later as a snare drummer. In fact, it's a funny story, but while preparing for one of the events in San Angelo, I tripped and fell during a rainstorm. I cut myself quite badly, and I still have a scar from that fall. But I'm the only person who has a funeral story that ends with a scar. At least, the only one whose scar is on the outside. So I give you this final act in the story of Espada. The story of pride, honor, duty, sacrifice, and scars. In the band's own uninterrupted words. I, I don't know, different things hit you differently. Uh, seeing the families. Uh, sometimes seeing your other officers um, or firefighters or EMS personnel and watching their reactions. Um, it's difficult. Jaime Padron's funeral was one of the ones that was was one of the that, that pulled at my heartstrings quite a bit. Um, it wasn't so much the funeral and it wasn't doing the honors, but it was at the end of everything, um, <clears throat> watching his two children drop flowers into his grave. Um, you know, we, I can't believe I'm getting so choked up, but um, you know, when you're in the position that we're in, you never really get the chance um, to mourn. That's not our job. Uh, our job is to bestow upon that individual, uh, that hero, whoever they may be, um, and immortalize their life in, a, in an appropriate way. Again, our job is to bring comfort um, to a grieving family. Um, and so we, during the time we play, um, that's our number one mission is playing that music well it's hard to do if you're grieving at the same time. Again, it's a bittersweet moment where you, you are there in a very surreal moment. You get to uh, honor someone that completely deserves it, that's given their life uh, for their community and their family, unfortunately, who has to live with it the rest of their lives. Um, so for me personally, when I think about it, it's, it's, it hits home. It uh, makes you realize, appreciate a lot of things at the end of the day, when you go home, you get to see your kids and hug your wife or your children and realize that I still have my time here with them. So the most difficult part for me is uh, when you're lined up at a line of duty and you see uh, across from you the family of, uh, of the fallen and you see the children over there. And that's the, that's the hardest part. Probably in most cases don't even have any idea what's going on. 
My mom was surprised when I actually joined the band because she knows I hate funerals and I would never go to funerals when I was younger. Um, not that I was afraid, I just, I don't know, something weird about it. So when she heard that I joined the band, she was shocked um, because they're so sad. Uh, but over the years, even though they're still sad, I've learned to kind of come to terms with death and the, uh, the ceremony of death and, and honoring officers uh, that have fallen in the line of duty. Um, to me, the best part is, is when the solo piper actually walks them to the gates of heaven. The saddest part, and always the most memorable, is the last call, uh, when they retire an officer's number uh, and call sign. That's always heartbreaking, and it's tough not to cry on those. Uh, whenever they do the uh, final 42 or final radio call to sign somebody off from life, that that's what I always think. A lot of people say, you know, like, oh, taps or, you know, the the volleys, the rifle volleys. But the thing that always hits me is the, uh, the final 42 radio call. It's where the dispatcher calls your call sign and uh, it's, it differs for agency and like how you died and like sometimes like the chief will be responding in it for that agency and saying you know sign that officer off um, that officer is 42 and it's just like you know that's the last time that they're going to be called on the radio and it's sad because the way they do it is it's like they're calling you but you're not answering your radio and that's like one of the things that I hate when I'm at work is when somebody doesn't an answer their radio I, I hate it it makes me mad like if if I find out they weren't answering just because they weren't paying attention, I'll get mad. Because like when they don't answer the radio, I, I start to worry. The most memorable part for me at funerals is when the chief kneels before the fallen spouse or children. And presents them with an American flag. The chief at that time tells them that he is their servant, as we all are, and as we all always will be for the rest of their lives. Yeah, so yeah, the, wor the worst part is hearing the children of those lost crying. And I think that the best part of performing with the band is seeing, uh, is, is being able to evoke the emotion from the crowd that we're playing with. Because I think, I know for me, when I'm not playing it, just the uh, Amazing Grace is, is an emotional song to hear, especially played on the pipes. And I know that that really tugs at the heartstrings of the people who are, whether it's at a funeral or a celebratory event, like uh, St. Patrick's Day, it's, people really identify with that tune. And so I think that's, it's pretty neat to be able to evoke that emotion. You know, people talk about the Thin Blue Line, and people talk about um, public safety coming together, fire, police, EMS. That transcends just the Austin community. It transcends the state of Texas. Uh, it's national. And a couple of things that have stood out with me that I'll never forget is after Jaime's funeral, we had just finished playing the Emerald Society Parade, the Bagpipe Parade, and we were all sitting around eating, and the pipe major from the Chicago Police Department uh, knew that we were there. He gets up, and we were at a very nice restaurant in Washington, D.C., and he says, ladies and gentlemen, um, and he introduces himself while he says he's the pipe major of the Chicago Police Pipe and Drum Corps, and he said, we're here with the Austin Police Department uh, Pipe and Drum Corps. And unfortunately, they lost somebody in the line of duty this year, one of their officers, and that's why they're here, and he explained National Police Week. And he said, you know, when you're in Honor Guard, um, you never have a chance to mourn. You never have a chance to reflect, because that's not your job. Your job is to be that, that public face. And he said, I'm from Chicago PD, and thank God we didn't lose anybody this, this year, but in memory of their hero and in memory of their service, we'd like to play for them. And in the middle of this restaurant in Washington, D.C., uh, completely unrehearsed, completely out of the blue, his entire band struck up and played Amazing Grace for us. Uh, and it wasn't for us, it was for Jaime, and it was for <clears throat> Jaime's memory, and gave us an opportunity to step back and not be the tip of that spear, not be that front line. 
and actually have a chance to remember Jaime. And that was pretty special that a major police department who didn't know us from Adam two seconds ago came together to do this for us. That's something I'm never going to forget. You know, general officers, paramedics, and firefighters, they don't go to every funeral, uh, but we go to every one. And it, 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 you come home, you know, you hug your kids a little tighter. When it's done and you look back, you don't think about, our eyelids don't think about the music and everything. I think about the faces of the, the spouse, the widow, of the kids. The kids, when you have someone who's young and dies and their kids are the age of my children, uh, it's hard not to think about what would happen to my family and to hope that there's the band or a band or wherever to take care of of my family and help them in that and there's nothing nothing's going to make it better for them for a while but at least we can help ease that and kind of start the healing process This band is made up of everyone, of firefighters, EMS, police. 
this opportunity with the band gives us a chance to go out all across the nation and represent who we are. Pipes aren't always um, this tear-jerking thing that you do. Uh, there's a lot of levity and there's a lot of fun and it's a, it's a glorious instrument uh, to be able to learn. Because it, it, it's not just, I want to do this, you got to be dedicated to this. You got to put the time and effort in to achieve respect and honor. The payoff is so worth it. This is just, I can't replace this experience. Through thick and thin, if I need anything or I've got this whole nother family outside, you know, we're all, we're all together. So it's not just APD folks, we've got other folks too. Playing the pipes or the drums is very rewarding. The performances are an amazing experience. It's time consuming and it's difficult, but it's worth it. I just can't speak highly enough of the quality people we have in the band, um, of the commitment level from every single person in the band uh, to our mission and to one another. Um, again, I've made lots of good friends in the band um, and uh, I welcome anybody that's willing to put in the time and the effort uh, to learn the craft, to learn the skill, um, to become part of us. So come, join the family. We'll have a lot of fun.